What's up guys? We are here in our kind of newly remodeled studio here in Las Vegas. Um, but before we get started, we're going to go into uh, uh, how to make your business a kingdom business and five ways to do that. This is actually going to be a multi-part series where I'm going to give actually a hundred different ways over the course of, of time. Um, so, but for right now, um, let's go ahead and open this in prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you so much for um, uh, just waking each one of us up uh, in this room and uh, watching this video this morning, Lord. We pray that you will uh, speak through me, Lord. Move me out of the way, um, Lord. Less of me and more of you. Um, and Lord, use this time uh, to open hearts, to penetrate hearts um, for your gospel and your truth. Amen. And so God has really put it on my heart to make my business a, uh, a kingdom business. And, uh, um, and so I wanted to give you all just a few different principles uh, or a few different tactics, if you will, on how to do that. Um, and the first one would be to make God the CEO um, and understand we are simply stewards. Um, so when we do that, it doesn't matter if you're starting a business, buying a business, um, it does not matter, or if you're working for somebody, you're just in the marketplace, um, you're going to want to surrender, just like you have uh, your life over to the Lord, you're going to want to surrender your business over to the Lord. And this is something that happens on a daily basis um, while you're in your prayer time um, in the morning or prayer time at the office. Um, this is something that you're going to want to make known um, uh, to the Lord and to those around you um, that God is the owner um, and the CEO of your business. He's the one that you lean on to make all the decisions. Um, and understand, man, we work for the Lord. Uh, we are simply called to be stewards of what we've had and uh, called to multiply. Um, so um, uh, when we are going through different things, it doesn't matter um, uh, what it is, whether if it's hiring, uh, making a decision on a contract change, uh, of how your sales process will be, you always want to consult the Lord and allow Him to lead the way on making those decisions. And so when you're doing that, um, pursue after Him and pray. Hit your knees in prayer. Uh, find a secret place out at your shop, at your office, uh, or get with your team and just pray over uh, the decisions that you're making. Um, and then run with it. Um, and, uh, and just listen for the Lord. And uh, uh, there are times, there's many times, uh, whether if it's systems uh, out in the back of my shop, um, uh, where the Lord literally gave me a direct download of exactly how those will look. Um, and so um, now when it comes to making a contract change or something like that, um, you know, we'll, we'll pray generally, um, but understand that the goal behind that is to steward it well and to make sure uh, that we're being transparent, open, honest, and that it sets our client and ourselves up to make sure that everybody is protected all the way around. Um, and it's not using manipulative language um, or saying, hey, um, um, you know, I, I'm going to hold off on making this change until I hear from the Lord. Um, there are times where that is 1,000% needed, uh, but then there's times where uh, God has already given us instruction within His Word. And so, um, so we know the guiding principles that we operate by, and, uh, and we make the necessary adjustments. Um, and uh, uh, the next thing is um, uh, make the hard decisions. Um, this is still under make God the CEO and understanding that we're the steward, but make the hard decisions no matter the cost. I don't care if you lose money out of a decision or what it is, man, but make those hard decisions. Um, and that can range from uh, 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 a, a letting somebody go um, or uh, expensing something that, um, having to spend money on something that, um, wasn't necessarily your fault, um, but but due to um, just consulting with the Lord, you believe that that's the right thing to do um, for your relationship with Christ and ultimately for your business as well. Um, and understand this. So when we look at Genesis 128, so I have the scripture pulled up on my computer here, um, but it said, God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So understand Adam did not create the Garden of Eden, but he was called to steward the Garden of Eden. So um, the same principle applies to your business. We are called to steward our business and, uh, and to rely on God for everything um, that we do. And, uh, and for systems, processes, hires, it does not matter, but consult with the Lord. And I promise you, he will give you the blueprint and, uh, for every decision that you're going through. So uh, next is, uh, uh, this is something that I feel is extremely important, um, whether if this is in your walk with uh, just Christ alone or if this is with your walk with Christ and through your business. You want to operate out of excellence. And so when we look at Colossians 3.24, the 23 says, Whatever you do, work heartily as, as for 
as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. So, uh, so one thing that we want to do is we want to do every single thing with excellence. We want to use the best materials. We want to have the best people. We want to make sure that every product that we put out is operating under the, the standard of excellence as the Bible puts out there. And so that doesn't mean that doesn't matter if you're faced with a decision. This goes back to the first point, to where man the paint didn't turn out well, or or the carpet didn't end up and and uh, uh, turn out very well, or there was a stain, or there was a run, or something along those lines. Um, and it's going to hinder actually shipping the product out. It's going to cost you money in the long run. Um, and uh, that does not matter. That's a decision um, that needs to be made. Um, quality is a, and excellence is a, is a principle um, that kingdom entrepreneurs need to operate by. So when we do that, um, we're building trust with our customers um, by, doing and say, and, uh, by doing what we say we'll do. Um, and understand this, that there's a lot of Christians, um, there's a lot of Christian businesses, let's just say, um, where you'll see them, they'll drive around with a fish on their truck, they'll have a scripture on their truck, but a lot of people that have worked with them before have not so many good things to say because they showed up late, they weren't professional, maybe they said something that they were going to do that they didn't do. And so um, understand that Christian grace does not excuse sloppiness and or lack of professionalism. So we are called to the highest calling as being kingdom entrepreneurs. And so uh, make sure that you operate out of that standard and understand that, that your word is everything and the quality of product that you put out is a direct relation, uh, has a direct relation to your relationship with the Lord. Um, another thing is, and this is still under excellence, but we should be creating the culture, not following the culture. Um, we should be creating the standards in the marketplace, not the other way around. We shouldn't be following what the world is doing, longing to be a part of what the world is doing. Um, but we should be creating those culture and those standards. Um, and, and ways to do that is to is again to rely on the principles that are found in Scripture and uh, and really lean heavy into that and, and allow the Lord um, to guide your decisions. Um, there is a, a philosopher where he says, um, he's a Christian philosopher, um, where he talks about our ability to reach the lost world will be directly related to how, we, to how we'll do our work. And so understand that if we're putting out a product that is not up to standard, up to biblical standards, or if we're speaking to clients that is not up to the excellence that the Bible lays out and how we are to treat people and love people, um, then we are completely demolishing our, our opportunity to share the gospel with our employees, with, um, with our clients. Um, on social media, or just a, a range of, of people will directly be affected by that and not in a good way, not in the kingdom way. Um, so understand that we are called to excellence. Um, and I, I can promise you this, if, you, if, if somebody came through this door and, uh, and they were like, listen, I will give you a trillion dollars, um, but you are not able to operate out of these standards. You have to pursue money and money alone. Um, you have to rely on me to provide all the decisions and to give you guidance on all the decisions. Um, I, I would pass that up because I want to. I want for God to be the CEO, for Him to be the owner of the business and to guide every decision. Um, at the end of my, before I bought this business, um, I um, um, and this is a. Just so y'all know, this is a a, a family business. Um, I've got my my wife here, uh, my mom and my dad here, and also my sister. And so um, uh, we all have a big part and a big role in this business. Um, and we're all coming from different businesses. So uh, uh, my story, um, just one thing that happened, one thing that God did at the end of my last business um, before buying this one. Um, was uh, um, I had a choice to where I had three jobs that were going. I was building pools, um, but building in-ground custom pools. And I had a choice whether I was going to, um, well, there was issues that came up on these three jobs. Was I going to handle these three issues, um, understanding that I only had X amount of dollars in the bank account and literally the, the amount that it was going to take uh, uh, to fund those improvements or to fund those, um, those issues that arise um, uh, would take me below zero? Um, or was I going to operate out of the standard that, that, that Christ lays out in his Bible and understand that I am here to make Jesus smile and love people and, to, and my word is everything? Um, so what I did during that was obviously I made the decision to take care of all of those jobs. And during that time, God actually shifted my mindset to 
and my faith skyrocketed, and he truly gave me a heart to, to love God and love people. And obviously the, the end result, making sure that my clients were taken care of, regardless of the implications of what it means for me, um, was, uh, was, was not important at that time. Um, it was more important that I represented Christ well, um, represented my business well, and, um, and that I did the right thing. And so um, the ending of that story is actually beautiful um, because God allowed for um, some investments to come through. And uh, almost immediately after that, um, and it was uh, um, it was just a beautiful thing of how God honored those decisions. I'll get into more of that story um, as we go, but it's just a beautiful kind of supernatural God story. Um, the next principle, so that was one and two. Uh, the third one is evangelize. Having a kingdom business is more than just sneaking Jesus into a conversation. Um, we, we know in Matthew 28, I'm going to have it pulled up on my, on my computer here. Matthew 28, 19 through 20, uh, God says, or Jesus says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I had commanded you. I am with you and always, even to the end of the age. Um, so understand that our, our actions have to line up with what is coming out of our mouth. And so it's extremely important to make sure that our actions do just that. Um, but then also understand that, um, that we need to be speaking of, of the mercies, the grace, the freedom that is found in Jesus Christ and how Jesus is the owner of the business and how he operates everything, shares ideas, um, and, uh, and what a beautiful thing that is. And so some examples of that, of how, okay, so how can I evangelize in the marketplace? Like, what can I do? Um, and so aside from listening in conversations and uh, listening to what somebody is saying, asking some questions, and then kind of using biblical knowledge or scripture um, as your answer, um, that would obviously be one way. Another way, what I do with my guys and girls in the back um, of my shop is I, um, I will pray for healing over them. If they are struggling um, with a cold or if they have... Um, a knee problem or a leg problem or something along those lines, um, I will literally pray for him and lay a hand on that and pray that God heals them um, by the mighty name of Jesus. And so that has always opened up doors um, to just continue to share the gospel. And it's been a beautiful thing. Uh, another thing is pray before your meetings. When you have team meetings, leadership meetings, doesn't matter, but pray before those meetings. It can be a really simple uh, simple prayer um, or it can be a longer prayer. Um, does not matter, um, but just bring God into every single thing that you're doing. Um, the other thing is, this kind of goes with the first thing that I said about this, but encourage in the Lord. So listen in conversations. Listen to what people are saying. Ask questions and then encourage with scripture or encourage in the Lord. Um, and then just look for opportunities. I, I, I look for opportunities on a daily basis, no matter if I'm on the phone with people um, or whatever it is. You know, have a blessed day. Uh, praise God. Um, just be unashamed. And, uh, and But make sure that it's not coming across as some fake or forced thing. Because um, I know when people are doing that, you can just tell when, when it's not genuine, it's, it comes across as fake or force. But do not allow the enemy to keep you from doing that because you feel, the enemy has put something in you that, that you feel this doesn't come across as genuine. And understand what First Timothy talks about, that God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but a love power and of a sound mind or love power and self-control. So if you're feeling fearful, that's not from Christ. Um, so the next thing is, uh, and this still is, is on point number three uh, of evangelizing, um, but the kind of business we do will impact others and how they learn to think and do business in life in general. We have the opportunity to set a Jesus Christ kingdom tone where excellence is modeled and an evangelizing tool. So make sure that you have a mindset. Ask God, pray to God that he will give you this mindset to understand the way you do business it will literally have a direct impact on somebody else coming to faith in Christ. Because if you are the person that has a fish on a truck or has a scripture or praise God or, or, or is always trying to correct with scripture or, or, or use prayer as a divisive thing, you are pushing people away from the kingdom. Um, we serve a Jesus and a God that literally is, uh, is all about love and, um, uh, and did a great job on his life on earth of exemplifying that. So when we lean on his principles and try to mimic him, like it says in Ephesians, uh, being imitators of God, um, we will find ourselves with many opportunities to share Christ. And, and a lot of times it will be um, just through our actions and the decisions that we make, and that will open the door for questions to be asked. And, uh, and for Christ to be shared. It makes me think of, uh, of Paul when Paul was in prison and he, um, um, uh, there was an earthquake and all the other prisoners um, uh, escaped and, uh, and Paul stayed behind and that opened the door for him to be able to share the gospel with the prison, or with the, with the prison guard who was literally about to kill himself when he realized um, what had happened. And so, um, uh, and then not, not long after that, um, the prison guards, his whole entire family got saved. Um, so your actions 
mean everything. We need to make sure that if we don't, if our actions aren't lining up with biblical principles, we are making them right. Pray to God that he will make you self-aware and that you will understand um, when you have fallen short um, of, of living up to those standards. Um, we are called to a high standard. Um, Christians uh, in the marketplace, we are called to the highest standards. Again, we are to set the culture, not the other way around. Um, number four is a prayer. Um, and this kind of goes back to evangelizing, but I'm going to share just a little bit more on prayer and how I use prayer in my business. Um, but prayer um, in 1 Thessalonians, I'm going to pull this up on my Bible or on my, on my computer. Um, but it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Um, that's a big one. Um, I've, I've spoke before about my prayer alarm. I have an alarm that goes off every hour. Um, sometimes I pray, sometimes I don't. Um, and sometimes I pray for two minutes, one minute, 30 seconds, or five seconds, and I just thank God for the person that's around me. Um, and I, I will literally stop and, and just kind of say a prayer, close my eyes. And man, it was beautiful. I was actually at the DMV a couple of days ago. My prayer alarm went off. I said that and then had the opportunity to share the gospel. Um, uh, with uh, with the lady that was helping me, and uh, and God really used that. So, um, so just an encouragement there. Uh, in Daniel, uh, we see um, now in Daniel. This is Daniel six ten through eleven. Now, when Daniel knew that the document was signed, he entered his house. Now, in his roof chamber, he had windows open toward Jerusalem, and he continued kneeling on his knees three times a day, praying and giving thanks before his God, as he had, as he had been doing previously. Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petition and supplication before his God. They had literally just made a law that prohibited Daniel um, from praying, and, uh, uh, and from praying three times a day, going up and praying out loud and having his windows open. And then they came and arrested him, and, uh, and the rest is history. So be bold. Who cares what the government says? Who cares what is at stake when you are doing something that they don't want you to do? And it, we have the greatest thing that is at stake is our, is our future in, the, in, in heaven and our eternity in heaven. Um, what we do here, um, we are just storing up riches in heaven. And not only that, but we are making you smile. I cannot wait and, and long to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Uh, so 1 Samuel um, uh, talks about, this is actually really cool. Um, so this is, I will do a whole nother series or just a video on this, um, but this is verses 1 through 5 on 1 Samuel 23. Then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines are fighting against Kilah and are pl plundering it, uh, the threshing floor. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and attack the Philistines? And the Lord said to David, Go and attack the Philistines and deliver Kilah. But David's men said to him, Behold, we are afraid here in Judah. How much more than if we go to Kilah against the ranks of the Philistines? Then David inquired of the Lord once more. And the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down to Kilah, for I will give the Philistines into your hand. So David and his men went to Kilah and fought the Philistines. And he led away their livestock and struck them with a great slaughter. Thus David delivered the inhabitants of Kilah. How beautiful. Um, there are many times whenever we will pray um, and, uh, and we will hear something from the Lord. And if we have a team like we should, um, we are not called to be lone rangers. Um, nowhere in Scripture does it call us to be lone rangers. So we should have a team around us. Um, and if we share something with them and it is met with um, some resistance, um, then uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong at times to, to go back and just consult with the Lord. I'm not saying that you need to do that every time. Um, but uh, consult with the Lord and then go, be obedient to what the Lord has called us to do. Um, so I'll, I'll go into more detail of that later. Um, but the next thing is, uh, is listening prayer. So um, this is a big part of my business. Prayer obviously is a big part of my business, um, but using listening prayer. Um, so Bible calls to be still um, and, uh, and listen for the Lord. So go into your room, go into your secret place, go into your closet, turn on some uh, William Augusto. Uh, if y'all don't know who that is, look him up um, on uh, Apple Music or any other platform. And um, um, he has, he's a Christian composer, if you will, and does really ambionic or ambient style of music um, uh, and just sit there and listen to what the Lord has to say. Pray a little bit at the beginning, but just listen to what the Lord has to say. And I promise you, you will walk out of there with revelation and with a exact blueprint on something to do or conviction of something that you need to go make right. Um, the last thing is, uh, is serve. Um, so Deuteronomy 10.12 uh, talks about now Israel. What does the Lord your God require from you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in his, all his ways and love him, 
and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Um, so uh, just an encouragement is do not serve your work. Um, do not make your work an idol, um, but make your work service to God. And so, as you know, Avoda, Avoda Talk is uh, the, the name of, of this YouTube channel. Is uh, uh, The original Hebrew word is work, worship, and service. So that's Avoda. God literally used the same word for work, worship, and service. Um, so, again, don't serve your work, but use your work to serve God and people. And so um, uh, doing excellent work, working out of, the, out of principle number two, um, is a way to serve our king and all the people impacted by what we're creating. So understand um, that what I do, um, that's in manufacturing of pools and then, and then here soon other products uh, within the manufacturing side, um, clients can be directly affected if something is not right. If something is not communicated right, um, it can affect marriages, it can affect relationships, it can affect many different things. And I don't want that. I want to make sure um, that what I am doing is not just out of excellence, um, but I am trying to um, uh, serve um, uh, through my business and ensure that the product I put out um, represents those principles. And um, understand, man, things happen. Um, but when things happen, uh, we go back and we make it right. And we do everything uh, to make sure that our clients are taken care of, our business is taken care of, and, uh, and Jesus is smiling up in heaven. Um, so one of the things... Uh, just a few, uh, four examples of where you can serve with your business, so that's your team members. Ways that you can serve them is by literally asking if they need something. I have, I have girls out there that are climbing up ladders, going over there, holding the ladder for them, um, asking if, if one of them is pregnant, taking them different food, um, uh, providing uh, just services to them um, during the day, um, and, and, uh, and ultimately teaching people uh, that are working directly, uh, uh, directly next to them uh, to do the same thing, um, to put others above themselves um, and look for ways to serve your team, um, look for ways that you can, you can be a blessing to them and ultimately their families. Um, potential clients, that's another place that you can serve, um, and by serving them, it's by providing the, all the necessary information that they need to make the decision. Um, and uh, um, or providing them with your word, with saying, hey, I was, I was going to call you today at 2, so I'm going to call you today at 2. Um, and uh, um, looking for opportunities to, to help them. Um, if you hear something of, of, oh, man, I needed somebody for this or I need somebody for that, um, and if you're available to help, then help. And, uh, and just, just uh, um, take yourself out of the situation, the time that you may lose, um, quote unquote lose um, and and and, and uh, um, understand that uh, we are called to love God, love people, and to serve uh, serve those around us and ultimately serve God. So um, our clients and our followers. So clients are are some of those that really fits within with the uh, potential clients. But uh, look for areas, look for areas to serve them. Um, and uh, uh, just a, just an example, um, some ways that I serve have served my clients um, is by providing them with job updates throughout the project, um, and uh, um, making sure that I'm going over and above. Um, I am providing more in value than I take in pay, and so that is a big principle um, for being a kingdom uh, kingdom entrepreneur, a kingdom business owner, kingdom CEO, um, and understanding. Um, uh, that ultimately God fills every single one of those roles since we are stewards. So um, offer more value than you take and pay. Um, the last thing is your followers. So we, we um, uh, when I say followers, I mean people on social media. Um, and figure out ways to serve them. One of the ways that I serve uh, people on social media is by um, just sharing the gospel. And, um, uh, and by sharing um, really cool content on this is how we're doing this or here's a job update. And, uh, uh, but most importantly, where my heart lies is, is, uh, is sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and the freedom that is found in him. Um, so the last thing, um, and this is, we'll, we'll conclude with this, but I uh, just wanted to encourage everybody out there, um, especially Christian business owners, uh, to surrender your business over to the Lord. And, and make God your CEO, make God the owner, um, uh, the majority shareholder, make him the decision maker, um, rely on him for literally everything. I promise you, you may think, ah, things are going to take too long, I won't be able to get this done quickly. Um, just, just give it a shot, man. God will move in ways that you cannot even imagine. Um, I cannot wait. One of these days I'm going to share some stories with y'all that are really some cool supernatural stories of, uh, of what has happened since, uh, since Berean got into uh, to that mix and uh, uh, making him uh, the CEO and understanding that we are the steward. Um, uh, all throughout scripture, God calls us to uh, be fruitful and multiply, um, use our talents to, to double our talents. Um, 
And uh, um, what a beautiful thing, um, working for the Lord. And so the uh, last thing that I want to do is, is close in prayer, and, um, and then we will, uh, uh, we will resume next week. Uh, dear Lord, uh, thank you again for everybody watching. I pray, Lord, that, uh, that, that who is watching heard what you wanted them to hear, Lord. Um, Lord, penetrate their hearts and uh, allow them to operate out of the freedom that is found in you being the owner, CEO, um, and director of their business, the president of their business, Lord. Lord, we love you. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.